My dear viewer, welcome again today to our series of 40 days of prayer. I'm so excited that today we are on day that night, just one more day to go. And I know today is on um, this being a, a beautiful Sabbath morning. I want to greet you all wherever you are. Happy Sabbath. Uh, it's very exciting to have a, a walk with the Lord for 40 days, praying and seeking him and listening from him. I'm sure we have received numerous blessings and miracles and testimonies. The Lord has throughout in our lives for the experience of 40 days of prayer. And I know even today as we pray one more time together, the Lord is with us. Of course, for those of us who have been following this program, I know in most part of the world this program is adding on Sabbath, but for us, because of when we started, we are adding tomorrow on Sunday. That's when we'll be having our 40th day. But we are happy that Sabbath morning to have you as part of our ministry. We are concluding on the series, the sub-series of um, the three angels' messages. Yesterday, we looked at the third angel's message that was calling people that they may be able to be faithful even at the point of death, that when it comes to the issue of worship, we have nothing to compromise. We shall not accept to receive the mark of the beast, but we shall remain faithful unto the Lord, for we know that Babylon is fallen. So join with me as we get to the conclusion of these messages, of three ages messages. Again, going back to the everlasting gospel, as you see how it is powerful and able to change lives, that we can be encouraged to continue preaching and reaching out to many out here. Let's pray before we get to the text this morning. A gracious Father in heaven, thank you so much for the precious moment that we have to be before you one more time. This Sabbath morning, Lord, we thank you and we praise you and we pray that you will continue blessing us and meeting us at our very point of need as we look at the power of the everlasting gospel. Lord, we, may you speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The text is uh, of Revelation chapter 14. That where we began when we started speaking about the three angels' message. And I want to especially read verse number 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. I'll read one more time. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Now, yesterday I said here that the angels that we're looking at here are not the literal angels, but these are the gospelers. These are the gospel ministers. These are the messengers of the Lord who are in different shapes and sizes, male and female, God's people that he is using to go out to speak of the great news of the second coming of Jesus Christ. They who have devoted themselves for the ministry of the word. That is where I belong. That is where I, perhaps you also belong. The angels of our age are those who are preaching the gospel. Those who are walking out of their comfort zone. Going out and looking for the people in the world. Telling them of the love of God. Speaking to them about the grace of Jesus Christ. And leading them to the cross of the Calvary, where their sins are being forgiven, that they may be revived, encouraged, be transformed, and be prepared for the second coming. Now, John says, I saw an angel fly in the midst of the sky with an everlasting gospel. And I want to pause here today to say that the gospel, the good news, the message, the word of God that we are preaching is everlasting. You see, there are people out here preaching various types of gospels. I don't know what kind of a gospel you are preaching, but for me, I am preaching the everlasting gospel. There's good news of the second coming of Lord Jesus Christ. It is indeed the good news of how we have been saved from the penalty of sin, how we have been rescued from the hands of the evil one, and we have been settled in the kingdom of God, in the marvelous light where Christ is our high priest. This is everlasting gospel because this ministry, this gospel is not ending. This is Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus is the gospel. 
He has a good news. You know, Paul says, I am not ashamed to preach about him. He, he, because it is the power unto salvation. You know, this gospel is everlasting because of who it preaches about. The gospel, it is everlasting because it is a story of Jesus Christ. It is tales of him who came from heaven, who once and in the beginning was with God, and who was God himself, and who left the glories of heaven to come, to incarnate, become like one of us, and be born lowly, like even lower than any other human being, that he may reach out to you and to me with the good news that it is forgiven. Your sins are forgiven, that we can have an access to the Holy of Holies through his blood. He is the gospel. And so the gospel is everlasting because Jesus, who is the gospel, is everlasting. And the angel here is flying and preaching the everlasting gospel. Paul says, when I came to you, I did not come in the knowledge of men and tongues, but I came having purpose to know him and him crucified. Jesus is the everlasting gospel. It is him that we are telling the world to come to, be, to, to, to know. It is him as we move out, as we get totally involved in the mission, we are asking you to get totally involved in the life of Jesus. You see, there are many people who come to church and they take up the gospel ministry, but they do not preach the everlasting gospel. Because you have not preached the everlasting gospel until you are preaching him and him crucified. Until you preach Jesus and him crucified, you are not touching about the, the everlasting gospel. And so I am excited because the angel of this age is seen by John in the midst of the sky with Jesus Christ, lifting the banner of the cross, lifting the banner of salvation, and telling people, behold him, the Lamb of God, that taketh away the sins of the world, that they may come, be forgiven of their sins, be prepared for the second coming. You see, friends, as we end our 40 days of prayer, it did for me, it has been an experience, rejoicing with the Lord every day, having my moment with the Lord every day. But more importantly, how this word of God has been able to minister to me in various ways through, has journeyed through the verses every single day, listening from the scriptures and listening from the spirit of God and being guided by his will. I am enriched and, and, and more encouraged to continue facing, you know, every single battle in the Lord because I know the message that I have is truly an everlasting gospel. I want to invite you this moment as we go to pray. Wouldn't you not be excited to know that once you are out here with the word of God, you're actually preaching an everlasting thing? Many of the things that we see here in the world, many of the things that people, men and women love and they spend their life with and in, they are not everlasting. They are perishing. They are passing away. But the word of God is everlasting from eternity to eternity. This word of God is immutable. This word of God is powerful. This word of God can change lives. This word of God is able to transform. This word of God has brought testimonies in our lifetime. This word of God indeed is everlasting gospel. And whoever desires to be ministered, but this word of God will never in any way be ashamed. This word of God is everlasting from eternity to eternity. It is a means through which you and me shall be found in his kingdom. But not just you and me, but even those who are not aware of what we know. It is us through this word. We shall step out of our comfort zone. Go and cheer them that they may come and enjoy and rejoice with us as we celebrate the power of the gospel. You see, friends, today as we are going to pray, I want to invite you to especially pray for the Holy Spirit to lead in the final days of the general conference session. We are so glad that as we are here on this Sabbath morning, the general conference is winding up their seating 
Today they're celebrating together with the other members in the World Church. We have new set of leadership. We thank God for what he has done. We are praying the Lord may, may be in the midst of the meetings. And we have seen, indeed, it has been a very peaceful experience. We have now have men and women that God has set apart for the next few years. They may continue serving the church and leading the church. We want to thank the Lord for what he has done. Pray for those coming into positions of new leadership. And the Holy Spirit would equip them for the task ahead of them. We also pray for opportunities to reach out to your family, friends, and neighbors, and co-workers with the gospel of Jesus. This everlasting gospel. Also continue praying for your seven member list. Even after the 40 days of prayer, I want to just encourage you to continue praying for them because they daily need your intervention. They daily need the presence of God. They daily need your sacrifice. They daily need your presence in their life through the, 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 the intercessory prayer. Continue praying for them. Pray for God to give you at least one person who you can lead to Christ in this coming year. I want to thank you so much because you've been so faithful in this ministry. As you pray, and you pray for so many people, please pray for me. Pray for your pastor. I need Jesus. I need God. I need, I need his presence and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't say, oh, that man of God, he, always God hears him when he prays. I need you also to pray for me because without your prayers, the devil will take advantage. Let's join together as I pray for you. You also pray for me. We are all struggling and fighting that we may finally have an access to the eternal life. This, together with what you have and many that the Lord will impress upon your thoughts and your heart as we pray, please, let's join together as we pray. Our gracious Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this precious moment that we have to be before you. On this Sabbath morning, Lord, we thank you for having walked with us the experience of 40 days of prayer. Lord, we thank you because you are coming to the very end of this season of prayer and many are things you have done in our lives. We have witnessed miracles. Lord, I want to thank you so much that even as we continue, even after the 40 days of prayer, may you, Lord, help us to still remain faithful in a walk of prayer that every single day we will not give up. We will not stop because the 40 days have expired. But Lord, this was to teach us that it is possible to have a genuine prayer walk with you every single day. Lord, I'm praying that because I know you have revived us, that we will not backslide. We will never turn back again, but we will continue in this good path. We will ex continue experiencing your presence. We will continue experiencing the revival. We will continue experiencing reforms in our lives. We will continue being excited about the gospel and being collaborators together with you, reaching out to many people out here, telling them of the everlasting gospel, that not only us that you are preparing, but even our friends, our brothers, our sisters, our family members, our co um, our workers together with us, our workplaces, that we all will be prepared for the second coming. We want to thank you so much for what you have done through the sessions at the General Conference. Lord, we thank you for the appointment of the new team. We thank you, Lord, for the man, uh, your manservant, uh, Elder Pastor Ted Wilson. Lord, thank you for giving him a second chance to serve you. Uh, one more time, brother. We know you are still in need of him. If you wanted him to come out of this position, Lord, you could have used your own ways. But I know you still have an assignment with him for this particular church in this particular time. Lord, I pray that we continue using him and filling him. I pray the Lord we may continue humbling him and the Lord he, we may not see him. That we may see you through him. Together with his wife and his family, Lord, we cover them with the blood of your son. Fill them with your spirit as they lead this great church globally. They need you. They need us also to hold their hands. My Father, I pray that you can touch every single church member out here. I know that those who are having different opinions. But Lord, what shall we say than to say thank you, God, for you are doing. Because you are always right in all that you do. And we know that indeed the church will grow in the next days coming. Because of his leadership, we pray for all the assistant presidents. We pray the secretary. We pray for the departmental leaders of the general conference. We pray for all the, the division presidents, Lord. We pray for the entire team of the division leadership, and even down to the unions, the conferences, to the local church. This is your church, Lord. Take charge of your church. 
those dissenting voices, we rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Because we know, Lord, none of us here has a church. This is a church, and we can always cooperate with you. We are not to fight for you, but we are here to cooperate with you and to wait to see the deliverance that comes from you. Fill us with your, with your spirit. Revive the church. Remind us of the great mission that we are supposed to be in that we may not lose sight of that cross of Jesus. We may not lose sight of the many perishing souls and dwell on the issues not important. But Lord, you shall agitate us right from deep within our hearts to see how we ought to be out here, the opportunities around us, the many souls are perishing, that we may not be found idle. But Lord, every time, be hastened to do your will, to do your mission, and lead many together with ourselves to be received into your kingdom. Bless us, Lord, and meet us at our very point of, uh, point of needs, not just spiritually, but even socially, economically, mentally. Lord, we are your children. Revive us and come through for our struggles. We need you every day. We need you every afternoon. We need you every evening. We need you every morning. We need you, Lord, every time. Please, Father, come. Those who are sick, heal them, I pray in Jesus' name. Those who are looking for job opportunities, my Father, may you give them those breakthroughs in Jesus' name. Those are struggling, their marriages, my Father, I pray for peace and love in those marriages. I pray even for our children that who are in school. Lord, may you make them to be great men and women in the days to come. And I pray, oh my Father, when everything has been done and said, yonder where the trumpet will sound, I pray for myself, my family, my church members, Nairobi Central Church, the global church and those that we influence, thou shalt be received into your kingdom for eternal life is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my dear viewer, for being with me, being with us in this journey for the 40 days, this day for, for that night. We thank you so much. Just invite you one more time. You have not clicked the button to subscribe to our channel. Please do, because even after 40 days of prayer, I can promise you many other programs are coming that you'll be notified every time that we have these programs. Also want to encourage you and thank you so much for sharing, continue sharing with as many friends and many people as you can so that we all may be blessed and prepared for the second coming. Tune tomorrow as we wind up these programs. May the Lord bless you as we worship today. God be with you.